In this presentation, we will talk about vulnerability assessment and mitigating attacks. This presentation is from the book Security Plus Guide to Network Security Fundamentals and this is from Chapter 4. In this presentation, we'll talk about vulnerability assessment, um, assessment techniques, we'll go forward and explain the difference between vulnerability scanning and penetration testing, and finally, we'll list uh, techniques for mitigating attacks. And of course, these techniques are probably the most important part of this chapter since um, you need to prevent these attacks. Okay, so let's uh, get an overview of vulnerability assessment. The first part of the assessment is an asset identification. That is where you look at your company and all that it owns and has and you decide what in your company has economic value that must be protected. Um, usually we think of this as physical assets such as computers and printers and servers and so forth but it also includes uh, people. Um, sometimes you need to make sure that people themselves are not attacked. So what you want to do in the asset identification process you want to make a list of, of all the assets that have any kind of economic value um, name them, name their location, um, their approximate value and that would actually really help so when you have to prioritize your defense you can use that to, to help you do the priority. Uh, the second thing you need to do is a threat evaluation. This can sometimes be a difficult process. That's because there are so many possibilities that come with a threat evaluation. But threat evaluation includes uh, physical damage from lightning, uh, flood, um, theft, uh, anything such as that. Um, and of course the threat evaluation, the virtual threat evaluation, includes people coming in over the internet, uh, trying to trash your web servers maybe, or um, you know, stealing data. But what most people don't realize is the, that the majority of attacks come from inside. 65% of all um, network attacks come from inside. So it's really kind of your employees or the people on your internal network you have to protect against. I know it's um, not popular to do that and to think about those people as threats, but they really are. The third thing you have to do is a vulnerability appraisal. Okay, for each of the threats in your threat evaluation, you need to do a really honest and realistic evaluation and appraisal of whether or not these threats can potentially harm your, your company. For instance, if you're not in a hurricane zone, there's no reason to have you know, protection against hurricanes. If you're not in a location where, say, tornadoes prevail, you don't need to worry about that. Uh, most locations, though, do need to worry about power outages, and uh, a lot of locations, especially in the northwest and northeast, need to worry about snow and ice and, and the, the threats that, that could come from that. Um, and pretty much everybody needs to worry about uh, incoming threats from the Internet. Um, of course, if you don't have a web server, you don't have that threat to worry about. So here's the point in your vulnerability appraisal. You need to just take a look at the threats that you've you've identified and see whether or not they they really have legs or see whether or not you really feel like there's any chance that they can harm your company. Fourth is the risk assessment. What would happen if you were subject to any of the attacks? What would happen if your city was hit by a hurricane? What would happen if a hacker came in from the outside and got access to your web server? What would happen if one of your employees found your, um, say, company payroll records or something? Okay, so the risk assessment is um, what happens if there was a successful attack or a successful threat? Uh, what, would, what would be the end result? And finally in this process is risk mitigation what can you do to mitigate these risks? Um, things such as UPS's, 
can mitigate, uh, say, power failures. Of course, you you can't have your whole company on a UPS, but you have your um, the resources that are especially vulnerable, such as servers, on a UPS. Um, you might build your get a building that's at a high elevation level, so that you know there's no threat from flood. You might have your roof, the roof of your building, checked or reworked so that there's no potential of, say, any leaks from rain or something like that. Um, you might uh, check your firewall to make sure the rules are preventing the, the bad guys from getting in. You might check your employees and their computers to see if everything on their computer is um, set to prevent them from getting to company records and stuff. So risk mitigation is what can you do to prevent the attacks. Now we're going to talk about assessment techniques. The first of these is baseline reporting. Essentially baseline recording um, records what is going on on your network or in your company when there are no threats. And why this is important is that you always have to got, have something to compare to. For instance, if you suspect that there's a threat and there's something weird going on in your network, if you haven't done the baseline reporting, you have nothing to compare to. And therefore, it's just kind of a guess. But if you have baseline reporting and numbers for, say, network utilization, server CPU, server um, memory, and so forth, then when you suspect something is going on, all you do is compare the current values with your baseline that you've recorded. And I would actually record uh, the baseline on a fairly frequent basis because um, your network changes or your usage changes normally and naturally. So just make sure you're recording this fairly often. So any software that your company uses offers a threat potential. The reason for this is that software um, can potentially be exploited. The size and complexity of modern software is really astounding compared to what it was 10, 20 years ago. And for this reason, because of the size and complexity, there's a lot more chance that the software can have flaws in it. And these flaws can be the things that can be exploited and uh, pose a threat. Sometimes software has um, formal app, formal specifications that are missing. And if this is true, um, what happens is the software was written sort of ad hoc and without this big cohesive um, plan, which means that, that the developers could have potentially left out some, some things that would have prevented um, threats. Future attacks uh, continue to create new exploits. It's not possible to foresee all the ways that code written today could be vulnerable tomorrow. And sometimes these are called zero-point attacks, where someone discovers something that nobody else has ever discovered or could f foresee. Um, and with proper requirements and design and implementation, the software actually can be developed so that um, the the risk of threats is is minimized. It's never gone, but it can be minimized. Now there are lots of assessment tools that can help you decide um, where your threats might be, or the, these assessment tools can help you identify um, threats, vulnerabilities that your system might have. The first is called a port scanner. Okay, and what a port scanner does is it scans all TCP IP ports to find which ports might be open or which might be um, exploitable. Protocol analyzers um, can view network traffic um, and if you're, you've got the right filters on, now of course if you're viewing all network traffic it's a lot to look at so it will be totally unmanageable. But you can set filters so that you can only see the kind of traffic you're looking for. Um, sometimes these are called sniffers, sometimes they're called uh, protocol analyzers. 
And there are also just specific vulnerability scanners that you can use. And their job, and they're, they're actually, some of them are fairly expensive. You can get demo and trial versions. But they scan your whole system and take a look and try to identify all sorts of um, vulnerabilities that you might have. Honey pots and honey nets, those are special types of software. And they sit on your system and they, honey, the reason they call them honey is because they're, they're sweet and they try to attract um, the, the attackers. Um, these honey pots and honey nets look like vulnerable targets, but what, what they really are is they're targets that are laying and waiting and just they're just finding out what the attacks are and recording the attacks. They're not actually vulnerable to attacks. They look like they're vulnerable to attacks, but they're not. They're just receiving the attacks and making a note of them and alerting you to the attacks so that you can deal with them subsequently. So there are two types of things we need to talk about now, vulnerability testing and penetration testing. We've kind of already mentioned vulnerability scanning, where you take software and it scans your, your network and all your resources, and it just looks for holes in them. It takes you know, commonly known ways of, of you know, looking for holes and, and you know, looks around. But that is different than penetration testing. The penetration testing is actually designed to do an exploit. If it finds an exploit, it actually goes ahead and, and tries to use it to get in. Um, and this software actually is kind of vulnerability scanning on steroids, whereas it, it not only scans for vulnerabilities, but then goes ahead and tries to, to use them in order to, to break a system. And lastly, we're going to talk about mitigating and deterring attacks. So the first step is you need to create a security posture. And this is simply um, you making a note of what your philosophy or strategy regarding security is. Um, don't forget that all security is, is a managed risk. You can't potentially ever get rid of all security threats unless you unplug your computer or if you unplug it from the internet or the network or whatever. It's always a balance between usability and um, security. Users hate security because it um, they have to remember a lot more passwords or there are a lot more restrictions on their use. Um, and security network admins they uh, love the security. They don't really care about the inconvenience of the users. So somewhere there's a balance between the users and usability and uh, managing these security risks. So there are controls that you have on your network, such as your firewall and uh, antivirus and, and so forth. And these always have to be configured so that they manage the risks and you also have to be vigilant to always review these uh, controls because um, you can always refine their usage and their, their rule sets and so forth. And lastly, there's a, an idea called hardening. Um, the purpose of hardening is to eliminate as many security risks as possible and make the system more secure. This may include uh, protecting accounts with passwords, disabling unnecessary accounts, disabling unnecessary services, and protecting management interfaces and applications. So in summary, we've talked about vulnerability assessment. That's where you have to know what your vulnerabilities are. We've talked about risks. And essentially, after you've done your vulnerability assessment, you can find out or at least discover what your risks are. Assessment techniques, that's where you take a look at what you have and what the risks are, and you, you do a, a, a realistic assessment of, of where you're at. Assessment tools, um, things such as port scanners, uh, vulnerability scans, these, these are special pieces of software that will scan your entire network. Penetration testing, where it scans your network and then uh, attempts an attack. 
And finally, we talked about mitigating attacks by um, configuring our controls, creating a security posture, and hardening.